All right, uh, welcome to part two of our look at Null Mixer. Uh, the previous video talked about the first stages of, I guess you could say, packing a couple of rounds of archive extraction, and we were able to identify those initial payloads that it was, was uh, dropping, and then the main actual Null Mixer um, executable itself. We identified that it is, is packed with ASPAC, and so that's now where we're going to pick up with our investigation. In order to do that, I'm going to move over to my Windows VM. And one of the first things that we'll do is uh, really just jump right into IDA here because we want to get this unpacked. Now, um, we could, if, if the signatures hadn't matched, you know, there's a process, at least a process I follow for trying to, you know, unravel, to identify the unpacking logic and, and get to the end of it. Um, there are some signs here, some pretty obvious ones, the segment names being ASPAC. Um, I'm not super familiar with it, so maybe there's others in terms of the the structures, uh, the structure of the direct or the segments. Um, but you know, certainly in looking at the code, there's a number of different um, elements here that uh, that also stand out. Uh, I'm going to go ahead. I forgot to do this um, setting up the demo here. Just bump up the font size, and we're going to need some line prefixes, and might as well add some op codes while we're at it. So adjust that through the options. Okay, um, so for example, you can see uh, this is the entry point. At the entry point, we see a push A. Come back to that in just a second. Then there's this call before we see a pop ink push ret, and then the graph breaks. And what's happening here is a call to this location. The call instruction will push the next address onto the stack. So that would be 51B002. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 bytes. So the address is 51B007. That immediately gets popped into EBP, that increments it by one, and then that gets pushed onto the stack before the ret. So whatever's on top of the stack, the return instruction takes off, and that's where it tells the CPU to go. So that's how we end up getting, or the flow here goes to 51B008, in which case then we've, we've, again, we've kind of got this broken graph, graph. So, you know, just very non-standard, unconventional things. Um, if we were to continue, things I would be looking for this is a good indication, an unconditional jump, an unconditional jump to a register. Um, maybe we can trace this back and figure out what the address is. Oftentimes the easiest thing, in my opinion, is to open this up in a debugger, set a breakpoint here, and just follow it there. And then that way you can go back and forth as, as it works for you between your, your IDA Pro or whatever disassembler you're using, decompiler you're using, and your debug session. Um, of course, uh, Ida Pro has a debugger integrated, so we could certainly use that. Um, I'm using the demo version of Ida, so it just has the local Windows debugger. But we don't necessarily need that. At least I'm going to go a slightly different route. And what we're going to focus in on is this push A instruction. Push A pushes all of the registers onto the stack. And the idea being that since it's pushing those registers onto the stack, it's going to restore them at some point. Um, now, when it does that, that restoration, that's going to be a pop A, and that likely the unpacking process is complete. So if we can identify a spot on the stack after the push A to set a breakpoint, a hardware breakpoint, because then we can set a read breakpoint to say, okay, when, when the CPU reads that region of memory, then that must be from the pop A. We know that we're, we're likely reaching the end of the unpacking. Um, and that's, that's definitely the case for ASPAC. Uh, very similar to what I started the last video with. Um, don't hesitate to open up a browser and search. You will find good write-ups on ASPAC. And hopefully now, folks, you found this video as well. Um, because that's one of the place, first places I always start. What do we already know about it? What have other researchers posted about it? Because if, if I can find a good write-up that says, this is how you unpack this, and I can get it done in you know a couple minutes... Um, rather than an hour or two or three of me trying to, to, to do the reverse engineering, I'm almost always going to take that route. Um, but in this case, we've got our address, 51B001, um, right? So we're in this ASPAC segment. This IDO will always use a default image base of 400,000 hex. Now for the unpacking, I'm going to use X32 debug since we have a 32-bit binary, um, I always check, or one of the first things I always look for is where is my, my, my main executable located at in memory. And you can see that this is at 400,000 hex. So that's at that, that default image base, which, which means I, I wouldn't have to adjust any of my breakpoints 
coming o- over from Ida. If this had a different if this had a different base address, then I would you know you'd have to make sure to do or account for that and, and set your breakpoint uh, appropriately. Now, one other thing, if we look at the breakpoints, and this is something that I almost always forget because I oftentimes am using WinDebug and WinDebug does not do this. Um, the default with X32 is to set an entry breakpoint. So it's already going to set a breakpoint on the push AD. So all I all we really have to do is go in here and begin execution. So I'll type G in the command window and now that breaks at the push AD. Uh, now I want to step one time after the push AD because I want to look at the stack after um, the push AD instruction has executed. Okay, to do that, uh, we can move over to the register window, ESP. Uh, we can right click and then you can view the, the, the you know where that where that is pointing to, the memory that that's pointing to, any way you'd like. Um, I'm just going to do follow and dump, dump window one. And be careful here. This kind of caught me off the off guard the first time because I wasn't paying close enough attention. ESP is pointing to 71FF54. That's not at the very top of the window as I would expect. Um, it's just offset here a little bit. Third row in, but there's the address. So now what we can do, we can right click on that first byte and we can set a breakpoint. We're gonna, well actually I already did that for the demo, so I'll remove it. Do that again, right click breakpoint hardware, access D word. So what we're doing is we're setting a hardware breakpoint on that address to say when the CPU reads from that location four bytes, we could probably do word or byte. I don't think it really matters. Um, but since the uh, the push AD will push in four byte increments for each register value, that I guess that makes sense. Um, now we have that, that breakpoint set. If we were to set a software breakpoint there, I'm not even sure what would happen. I didn't try it, um, but that's setting it in the stack and we certainly the, the CPU isn't going to go there and execute. So if it allowed us to do that, it wouldn't serve our purposes anyway. Now with that set, we can resume execution and you'll see that we broke after the pop AD. So there is a pop AD. So that's a good sign. Um, if you just trace a couple more instructions here, what you'll notice is there's a push 4014A0 and then a ret. So we're pushing an address that is going to take us to the text section, and that would be a, a pretty strong indication to me that either we've transitioned significantly to another stage of unpacking, or in this case, we're done with the unpacking process. So now what we can do is just follow that ret, and let's use Scylla or Skyla. All these years, I still don't know, and we can just go ahead and dump. Um, you may need to do the PE rebuild or fix dump, but in any case, once we've done that, um, we can save that to the file system, and now we can go ahead and investigate that executable to see what we found. Okay, so taking that dumped executable and opening it up with IDA, of course, you don't always have to go right to IDA. You could use other analysis tools, such as PE Studio or Detect It Easy to get that first glance. Um, you could just take the file and, and dump strings on it just to see what strings are available. Um, fortunately, and, and another measure that the that the extraction was successful is that Ida is able to actually disassemble it. And, um, and as you can see here, uh, I got very little, although you didn't see me initially load it, I got very few, really no errors in parsing of the PE file. And we have, um, you know, what appears to be a, a nice clean function graph. Um, in addition, we have some pretty pretty obvious or pretty clear signs of that, that match up with the behavior that we've observed initially. And that is the name of our files, S-O-T-E-M-A underscore one dot X-E dot text. So perhaps a renaming is going on there. Sure looks like it based off of the, the function call. Um, and then as we scroll down, it would appear that if I had to guess each one of these blocks is responsible for executing the, the payloads. Um, I haven't looked too deeply into this at this point, uh, but we can see that there are some, you know, what appears to be some uh, URL query string parameters being built up. And you know, as we jump towards the bottom, um, other evidence of things like uh, report error.php and the, the key for the network that this was, uh, was, was supporting. Okay, um, we can also take a look at the strings window. Uh, it's easy enough to do in IDA. Just go to open... 
uh, go to view, open subviews, and grab strings. And all I was looking for was a quick and easy way it is to see all of the strings that are available. And in, and in particular, this host uh, that I mentioned at the beginning of the part one video, because this was part of the config extraction that we saw in triage. So we could also then take a look at uh, cr chasing, tracing, excuse me, cross references. All right, so if we trace that uh, cross reference, we can see there are some other, you know, interesting URLs here. Um, definitely, this is a, uh, would appear to be a non H non secure connection. So non HTTP. So uh, these would be pretty good. We'd, we'd likely observe these. I don't, I don't anticipate any anti analysis in here, although I didn't look. Um, but, uh, you know, we could observe this just through the sandbox run. But certainly now looking into it, this would make for some pretty good uh, network signatures, some IDS detections as well, particularly because there's no TLS stuff to deal with. Um, of course, you could continue to trace this back. You know, now we've identified this, this function. I might call this, uh, you know, C2 check-in, something like that. Uh, and I like to put question marks by things that I'm, when I'm just sort of building that initial picture and uh, start tracing cross-references if you'd like, maybe see where this was being called from. Um, if I continue to do that, though, in this case, it gets a little bit messy, but you get the idea. Um, if we skip back to the beginning, um, you know, again, there's plenty of code here to analyze, and I haven't done that, but now, you know, you've, you can see it's a fairly, it looks like it's fairly straightforward at this point. Not a lot of obfuscation, although there's still plenty of code to analyze. Um, pretty good ability to create a YAR rule here. Maybe we'll do that in the next video, or I should say in a future video. Um, as well as, again, kind of explore some of those strings, maybe find some additional host-based and network-based network -based indicators. But I'll leave that to you. Um, hope you enjoyed the process of just getting to this point where we've unraveled and unpacked it. And uh, if you have any comments, please leave those in the videos. Otherwise, I'll continue to create more. So if you have suggestions as well, please feel free to reach out. Uh, but again, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you all in the next one.